is never going to be the same again. I'm worried about the world. The mass chaos and crises that there was in the world, it's going to be just like that now. This is not an accident. How long is it going to last? Longer than even for those of you that have some cash in the bank, way past your cash reserves. Please. Out of a hundred people, four will get the message. This thing isn't going to be over in a few weeks. This thing isn't going to be over in a few months. I go by Hertzburgers to get some furniture. You got three rooms for 298. That's what they say on the radio. Three rooms, 298. He made up a little song about it. Get down there. Man, tell me I can't get no credit. I'm working every day. Can't get no credit. You can't get a loan. You can't own a home. You can't start a business. Mr. Garrett, you have been warned. Which means you can't build wealth. Mr. Garrett! And you're excluded from the American dream. Sergeant at arms, remove the witness. Why is it so important to you to exclude an entire... Is rest. And, 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 and you see, one of the great tricks, and it's funny, everybody got everybody working two jobs except the people that control. They don't work two jobs. Three jobs. Four jobs, a job and something on the side. It's not about that. Show me somebody that has two jobs. I'll show you somebody that has no money at all. I mean, that's a game they play. I mean, some kind of way we have to redo our priorities. It's a form of racial animus perpetrated against our people. <clears throat> They've devised an actual culture of keeping us impoverished. Many of us have become so complacent with having bad credit or not even knowing how to build a credit profile that because we've learned how to pay our bills month to month or manage to stay alive, we don't even care to fix it. We've become complacent with the fact like, hey, I got bad credit, so you know what? It is what it is. I want you all to get out of that mentality. You hear what I'm saying? I need you all to get out of that mentality. That's what I want. Oh, it's easy. Last year I borrowed $2 million tax-free. How I got that money is exactly why Susie Orman says don't do whatever Dave, Dave Ramsey says don't do, <laughs> I do, because I'm a little, I've trained different than them. That's I had three sons that went off to college. I said to them, I'm not giving you a debit card. I'm giving you a supplemental card off of my credit card. It'll have your name on it, but it'll be my account. And every month, I will get the bill for two reasons. One, so that I can see how you spend your money every day, if you're spending too much time in the bar, etc. But two, Every month I pay the bill, your credit score is going to go up. All three sons came out of college with scores well in the 750s or higher on their credit score because of at three. Your children and grandchildren, when you grow up, when they grow up, during the greatest transformation of wealth, when they were given money away free, interest rates are at a 5,000 year low. 5,000. What were you doing, daddy, grand? What are you going to tell your children and grandchildren when you grow up? November 8th, I announced that uh, when Mr. Trump, whether you uh, love him or hate him, this was the beginning of the greatest transformation of wealth since World War II. See, I know what he was going to do. I knew what he, and I know what he's going to do now. And he hasn't even got started. Now, what are you, you going to tell your kids and your grandkids 25 years from now when they say, Gee, Daddy, gee, Grandpa, what were you doing other than having your thumb during the greatest transformation of wealth in the history of the world? That's what most of you will tell them, your grandchildren and your children. It's never going to get any better than this, kids. This is the, as I said on YouTube, the eye of the purple. This is it. I never thought I'd live to see it again. This is going to make the 80s look like a nursery rhyme, which I... Praise Allah, praise Buddha, praise God. I participated in slashing and raping everybody in the 80s, legally. This is going to make that. Let's tell your kids. Oh, I had to spreadsheet it. I had to think about it. I had to read another book on Amazon. Morons. Did I answer your question? Yeah, pretty much. We're not going back to the same economy. We're, going, we're recovering, but to a different economy. And it'll be one that is more leverage to technology, and I worry that that is going to make it even more difficult than it was for, for many workers. In Silicon Valley and my friends who work in technology know that what we did to the manufacturing workers, we are now going to do to the retail workers, the call center workers, the fast food workers, the truck drivers, 
And then even bookkeepers, accountants, uh, insurance agents, lawyers, and on and on through the economy. So what happened to the manufacturing workers is a very clear sign of what's going to happen to these other workers moving forward. We're in a bubble right now. And the only thing that looks good is the stock market. But if you raise interest rates even a little bit, that's going to come crashing down. We are in a big, fat, ugly bubble. And we better be awfully careful. And we have a Fed that's doing political things. This Janet Yellen of the Fed. With the 19 trillion in debt now going up to 21 trillion, 21 trillion, you know how much money that is? We got to be smart. Now we got to really be smart because we don't have money anymore. You know, we're a poor nation. We're a debtor nation. And we could be on a bubble and that bubble could crash and it's gonna, not going to be a pretty picture. You know, the market's gone down big league the last couple of weeks. But, but we could be on a big fat bubble. And if that bubble crashes, it's a problem. Throughout the summer, Democrats cruelly blocked COVID relief legislation in an effort to advance their extreme left-wing agenda and influence the election. Then, a few months ago, Congress started negotiations on a new package to get urgently needed help to the American people. It's taken forever. However, the bill they are now planning to send back to my desk is much different than anticipated. It really is a disgrace. For example, among the more than 5,000 pages in this bill, which nobody in Congress has read because of its length and complexity, it's called the COVID Relief Bill, but it has almost nothing to do with COVID. This bill contains $85.5 million for assistance to Cambodia, $134 million to Burma, $1.3 billion for Egypt, and the Egyptian military, which will go out and buy almost exclusively Russian military equipment. $25 million for democracy and gender programs in Pakistan. $505 million to Belize, Costa Rica, El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, Nicaragua, and Panama. $40 million for the Kennedy Center in Washington, D.C., which is not even open for business. $1 billion for the Smithsonian and an additional $154 million for the National Gallery of Art. Likewise, these facilities are essentially not open. $7 million for reef fish management, $25 million to combat Asian carp, $2.5 million to count the number of amberjack fish in the Gulf of Mexico a provision to promote the breeding of fish in federal hatcheries, $3 million in poultry production technology, $2 million to research the impact of down trees, $566 million for construction projects at the FBI. The bill also allows stimulus checks for the family members of illegal aliens, allowing them to get up to $1,800 each this is far more than the Americans are given. Despite all of this wasteful spending and much more, the $900 billion package provides hardworking taxpayers with only $600 each in relief payments. And not enough money is given to small businesses, and in particular restaurants, whose owners have suffered so grievously they were only given a deduction for others to use in business their restaurant for two years. This two-year period must be withdrawn, which will allow the owners to obtain financing and get their restaurants back in condition. Congress can terminate it at a much later date, but two years is not acceptable. It's not enough. Congress found plenty of money for foreign countries, lobbyists, and special interests while sending the bare minimum to the American people who need it. It wasn't their fault. It was China's fault, not their fault. I am asking Congress to amend this bill and increase the ridiculously low $600 to $2,000 or $4,000 for a couple. I am also asking Congress to immediately get rid of the wasteful and unnecessary items from this legislation. 
and to send me a suitable bill, or else the next administration will have to deliver a COVID relief package, and maybe that administration will be me, and we will get it done. Thank you very much.